hear it for the next lightning talk. So thank you so much for coming. It's good to see so many familiar faces. And I'm really excited to talk about a pet project which I'm working for the last few months. Uh, the broader theme is about how do we use AI in UX. And specifically, it's about how do I, as a designer, create designs which is personalized yet scalable to millions of users. That's the broader theme. Yeah? Let's get started. So today, AI can do a lot of cool things. Things like hyper-realistic photos are today become such a normal thing, it doesn't excite us anymore. And things like self-drive cars have already hit the roads. It's not a myth anymore, right? And things like healthcare, the transformation AI is doing is just spectacular. What would take us 13 years and billions of dollars to decode a human genome can be done in a matter of few hours for a fraction of the money as on now because of AI. Why go so far? We ourselves have our on-device AI with our smartphones where whatever you search for in one app, for example, let's say you're buying shoes on one app, the next time suddenly you will see only shoe ads everywhere that you go for, right? Whichever app that you open. And these are some of the really sleek cool stuff that's happening with AI. But think about it. Is it really cool? Because at some level, to me, this looks like it's a borderline creepy. Certain use cases of AI is actually scenarios which makes us feel extremely uncomfortable. Sometimes I personally feel that AI knows more about me than I know about myself. As I talk to you, AI has been training with a lot of good content, a lot of good data. It's getting even better at crunching numbers, recognizing patterns and predicting our human behaviors. As of last year, the data says that in a survey, there was 97 zeta bytes of data that was created globally on all the online platforms. To put this into perspective, that is 97 followed by 21 zeros. Every click, every preference, every digital footprint that you leave on the online platforms is feeding into this massive beast called as AI. So this leads to the concept called as the empathy paradox. What is an empathy paradox? It says that more data doesn't always mean better human connections. Let me take this with an example, right? So all of us use Instagram, and Instagram already has sophisticated AI already embedded into it. It knows what your likes and dislikes are, such that it gives you a constant stream of content in form of reels and posts that you're hooked onto it. Right? In such a way, it's, it's, it's almost like ironical, right? Because at some level, you are creating such a sophisticated software, which is highly personalized. It gives you what you like. So you start seeing about people through a mobile phone. But in reality, you talking to an actual human in person is reducing in time. This is what we mean by more data doesn't always translate to better human connections. So what do we do about it? Why is this difficult a problem to solve? This, this triad of sorts, right, which is AI at scale, personalized, but is connected by this human element, is a difficult nut to crack. Let me show this with an uh, analogy to explain this even better. Uh, I have a question to ask. Any volunteers? OK, you essentially can say. Uh, what is the favorite meal that your mom prepares for you? It's like anything my mom cooks, I love it, but uh, idli sambar is wow, something okay. I like. That, that's my favorite too. So Ashi here says idli sambar buttoned by a mom is a favorite food, right? Now, if your mom has to prepare idli sambar, She's going to make sure that she chooses the best ingredients. It's done in the most hygienic way possible. So you want to shower our love and affection onto it and make it the way that you like it the most. Now that is what we call as a classical example of a highly personalized 
one on one solution now ashi if your mom had to prepare food for everybody in this audience in the same way which is you know personalized to their taste it's going to be highly impossible humanly right why humans even ai with its all its power and prowess it's what it's got today large scale personalization is still a difficult challenge which is not solved maybe in future but not now so how do we as designers create design solutions which are both meant for scale but it also has an element of empathy introducing what i call as a heart framework where h stands for the innate need to collect high quality human centric data in the new age of ai it's even more important that you do good quality research so that you just don't collect data but you collect more things about why the user does what and what do they expect out of a solution that is built by ai second is e e stands for ethical design practices now it's is unfortunate that i have to talk about this because this has become a huge villain in the recent times as designers we should be making sure that we are the gatekeepers and we avoid and advocate against any kind of manipulation any kind of dark design patterns that is used which is in the tool of design right why do we have to do this because the whole point of the well being of the user their privacy and respecting them and keeping them in the forefront should be our job as a design craft a stands for adaptive personalization ai solutions should be in such a way that the users needs and emotions are something which adapts to their needs let me show this with an example again right so let's say ai curates news for us right news can be both happy it can be sad it can be extremely exciting it can be extremely depressing it can be consumed by a young little girl or an elderly woman right so in this case because you're talking about a spectrum of users the way i design my solution and the way it is being catered to different kinds of audience needs to adapt to their emotional capacity to their needs and expertise r stands for relentless learning i i spoke here last year i'm speaking here again on the same topic of ai and so many things have changed the tech landscape is evolving at a very rapid pace and as designers we should be at least aware of what is happening in this tech world so one way that i do as personally to kind of know what is happening in the tech world is using tools like the gartner's hype cycle if you have not heard about it please take a note of it and read about it later online it's a very very powerful tool which lets you know what are the technological areas which will last in the world for the next 5 10 15 years the last thing it's a no brainer t is for transparency it's extremely important that you as designers whatever solution that you design needs to say with utmost transparency as to what is it saying how is it saying and from where did the source come from for example if i design a solution and i am aware as a designer that my solution is only 95% accurate i should call it out saying that there is 5% chances that this design solution might go fail because i am not sure of what the source kind of came through so making sure that you are keeping it as transparent as possible is extremely important with transparency comes trust and with trust you build meaningful relationships not only for humans but also for ai this is extremely relevant so that was my key takeaway that i want to kind of deliver to you in this lightning talk i'll end my talk with this uh, small story an incident which happened to me in my life few years back i was at an ngo where i met this little girl who was aged about 6 uh, or 7 years old for privacy reasons let's say her name was priya right this poor girl lost her left leg in a road accident and she has to come to this ngo to get a prosthetic leg fixed and she has to come every 6 months to 1 year because one leg is normal the other is not so she starts limping every 6 months to 1 year so on the day when i met her her measurements were done but she just chose not to go back home she was throwing tantrums she was creating a ruckus she just did not want to go home her grandma is pulling her and coaxing her nothing worked so i walked up and asked like hey why aren't you going home this 6 year old girl told me this exact sentence in kannada she said while i am in the ngo here 
I look so many people like me, I feel like I'm normal. But when I go home, I see so many kids of my age playing and doing things which I can't do, I feel I'm extremely disabled. There are countless number of Priyas out there in the world who need personalized solutions at scale. As UX designers, what can we do in this age of AI to make a difference and touch these lives of these people? The one note I would like to end my talk is, imagine a world where we as UX designers have created personalized solutions which feel like a warm hug and not a cold calculation because we are one of the few crafts as UX designers where we have the power to not only consume AI but also create and drive AI-based solutions which makes meaningful